Uh, and in particular, along the same lines as the, the question that was asked, uh, pretty much every morning radio show in North America is using FARC for all of their information. Uh, and in many cases, reading the taglines in order verbatim. Uh, on top of that, uh, most mainstream news has somebody monitoring us to use for pieces of it, uh, and then all the late night talk shows. Uh, Leno has used some headlines straight off of FARC. Uh, and I know for a fact that Jimmy Kimmel's show has a guy whose hired job is to read Total FARC. I met the guy. He's uh, got a pretty interesting job, I guess. But uh, what's interesting about that is, is that it isn't really a problem that they do that. I mean, it, it's, it's not that big a deal. I don't consider it to be stealing because, I mean, honestly, who cares? And in particular, there's so much of an upside if you can get them to admit they're doing it. Um, like, for example, there's really no benefit to us at all for filing a lawsuit against Jay Leno. What we really want him to do is say, and on FARC today, I saw blah, blah, blah once a week at most because it sounds a little bit weird to do it more often than that and so that's what we want to do and we've been talking to the Daily Show for the last two years trying to convince them to do that there's an interesting problem though in that um, and I didn't realize this up until recently I was talking to somebody who's a writer for Leno and I asked him about that I was like could you please mention if you pull some stuff from FAR because they're generating tons of stuff off of us mention it you know once or twice a week and they said they actually can't do it as writers because of Writers Guild of America regulations because that's treated like product placement I called the Writers Guild to double check this and they confirmed it. It's actually true. The only people that can authorize that are the network themselves. Yeah, and there are also union contracts where they can't say they got a joke or a line. For right. So there's like, there's all kinds of legal issues surrounding it. And so that's actually, it's not really necessarily that they're trying to slight us on that. It's that they actually, they don't understand what the legal ramifications are. And so rather than delve into it, they're just going to skip it entirely. Well, there's no via link in any media except the web. Right? Yeah. No, there's a kind of a loose journalistic thing of, you know, well, this is the original source for this. If somebody breaks a story. But yeah, and the Fox News guys said, too, like I said, we just don't do hat tips, period. I mean, we never have, we never will. Um, but to give you an example of how the mainstream media works, I've been on CNN and Fox multiple times, and in their control rooms, they've got this giant ass, like, wall size screen divided up into segments. And along the top, in CNN and Fox and all these guys, they've got each individual network. They've got ABC, CBS, NBC, MSNBC, CNN, Fox. They're watching all of them simultaneously, waiting until one of them puts up a breaking news alert. They blow that one up on the main page, and then they write it up and send it out to their anchor, who then repeats verbatim what was just said on the other channel, which is how you get something called what I call the mysterious repeating source, where occasionally somebody will quote somebody in the news, and it'll end up all over the place, and it turns out that it actually was one guy that was misquoted. Yeah, um, I don't have a problem. Uh, like writers on the site have a problem when, like, New York Times quotes their entire thing and doesn't even attribute their name or their real name or their username. And sometimes it's nice if they link back to where they got it from. I don't expect that in print, but on the web, it's kind of cool. Uh, for the most part, the only thing that makes me pull my hair out are like guys that buy typo di domains and put ads all over it, or suck down the RSS and throw ads all over it. That's annoying. Um, yeah, so f we, from the start, I've always known that our users have made Reddit. Um, we, we keep the restaurant open. It, it's a terrible metaphor for Reddit because I would not want to go to a restaurant powered by Reddit. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's more like that place that allows you to make your own meals and take them home, kind of. Exactly. Yeah, we get all the vegetables there. You come down and kill the cow yourself, chop it up, whatever. <laughs> um, but I think, I, I do, can't think of any instances in which mainstream media has ripped off our users. I mean, that's that's their content. Their, your brilliant comment is your brilliant comment. Um, if they did take more of our content, maybe the news wouldn't suck as much as it does. Uh, so yeah. why not? Actually, I want to I share the most irritating example of this that happened so far in recent memory, which was is, uh, it was right around the time when Israel invaded Lebanon and everybody was using that as a metaphor for World War III. Uh, CNN did a great one where they were doing kind of the roundup of what everybody was saying about this. And the three sources that they used were they show what was going on in The Daily Show, they show what was on the Colbert Report, and then they showed up what was going on on the internet in screenshots of FARC. <laughs> Never once mentioned FARC, it was the internet. So I guess that's kind of flattering, but it didn't do us a damn bit of good. Hey, um, I have a question specifically for Drew. Uh, first off, I got to say, uh, FARC.com was my uh, entryway into the wonderful world of memetics. Um, I'm glad Clark. you said that. I was afraid there was some kind of drug reference coming up, but I was going to deny uh, everything. No, 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 the wonderful, yeah. <laughs> uh, and well, it was sort of through the looking glass for me. And um, I just have a question that is for me, devoid of any conflict, I just want to know. Um, what was behind your decision to uh, let your 
picture be prominently displayed on that uh, conservative t-shirt site, those shirts.com. It's sort of... Oh, yeah, they just asked me. I said, yeah, what the hell, why not? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was it. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> I was like, all right, whatever, I don't care. I don't know why they wanted it, but I, I'm fine. <laughs> I like the easy yes or no questions. Do we yeah. have any more of those? <laughs> I think we had one down here. Well, actually, the shirt that I think that they had me wear was the one where it's like I just neutered the cat and now he's French. Uh, I thought that was a funny joke, so I was like, all right, I'll just go for it. I wear it when I play soccer. It's a good time, especially when we play the French teams. Uh, Matt, I've heard you express some uh, conflicted emotions about the sort of insular culture of in-jokes and references that can crop up on Metafilter sometimes, but I think this applies to probably everybody. Do you feel like having in-jokes and, and community memes and things like that is the sign of a healthy community or is it just sort of exclusionary wankery? Um, I mean, I've always been of two minds. Like, it's just, it's, so, it's a double-edged sword. Like, it does show that your community is strong enough that the same people sort of recognize each other and recognize trends and patterns and they sort of make fun of that by always, they just make up a joke and they just run with it. And then, I mean, after a week, it's not funny anymore. After a year, it's not funny anymore. Two years later, it's still not funny. Yeah, but three years later, it's funny again. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Just way long enough. It's like The Simpsons. And I, I don't like... <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> and I think of, like, in-jokes. And, uh, uh, I mean, sometimes it comes up, it, it becomes, like, jargon for the people in the know. They know what you're supposed to say here, here, and here to do the three-step joke. Um, it comes off as like, it just makes the site cryptic to new people, and I don't like that. I don't like a lot of jargon. Um, so, I mean, it's a sign of a strong community, but it can also become exclusionary and not be funny. Are there any in-jokes on your guys' sites that you actually like, that you see and you're like, every time it makes you laugh? Wake up, sheeple. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, who else has a question? I thought I would see some more back here. Put some hands up, people. Make a question up. There's one. You have three steps to think of a question. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I know Drew has a, a whole section dedicated to Florida, but... Um, <laughs> and it's not you, big enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, totally. But um, do you guys feel that you should be more local? I mean, everybody here is sort of U.S.-centric or maybe just global news-centric. I mean, I don't know. We actually do a lot of stuff with the sports. I lived in England for a year, so I'm kind of sensitive to what goes on there and the fact that they have a completely separate pop culture full of really shitty acts we've never heard of before. And they're uh, homely, too. What's that? They're homely. The stars in the UK, why aren't they more attractive? It's the teeth. <laughs> oh. oh, come on. I lived there for a year. Trust me, it's all real. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I try to keep an eye on it just because, especially with Canada as well, I mean, there's a lot of really funny stuff going on up in Canada that we never hear about, especially their politicians. I mean, boy, if you think our politicians are weird, you ought to check out Canadian politicians. I mean, you know, they got guys trying to secede up there, you know? I mean, how awesome is that? <laughs> So, yeah, I, we try to keep an eye on it. And plus, too, I think I like living in Kentucky because it kind of it frames my reference a little better. You know, when you live in a flyover state, it's a little, you, you tend to have a different view of things. And how much absolute and utter horse shit is covered coming out of New York City. I actually spent one morning watching a tarp fire on the 59th, 7th Street Bridge in uh, New York City. They broadcast it live on CNN and Fox for about an hour and a half. It was crazy. Uh, wait, I got, I'll throw it in. Um, I guess uh, kind of talking about the U.S. centricness of, of these websites, um, I know we're, we're trying to do translations to get people from other cultures to uh, submit music to us. Um, what, what languages have we got, man? Uh, the big one is Japanese. Um, there's a whole other sort of video game remixing scene in Japan. It's not centralized and we're trying to reach out to them, but we've also translated our submission instructions into French and Spanish. So we're actually trying to work on, on being a more global resource when it comes to video game remixes. Uh, going along with allowing users to create their own little communities, um, about 40% of our traffic... Get closer to the, the mic. Oh. Chris is in the audience. Is about 40% of our traffic comes from abroad, Statman? Yes? Okay, awesome. Chris has also been heading up the internationalization effort, which is why the Reddit UI is now in a shit ton of foreign languages, including lull. Um, <laughs> and then some ones that people actually speak. Uh, but so yeah, we're, we've made a big international push. It, it's a little frustrating because the site is, yes, predominantly very US-centric, but that's why we want people to create their own Reddits so you can have 
whatever the hell you want because we know the world's a little bit bigger than just this one country. So, so this idea of inclusiveness, are there things that were just outside the pale for your communities or things that didn't catch on that you really kind of wanted, like you had this fingers crossed, like they're going to love this and it didn't take? Yeah, it's happened before. Unfortunately, one of the topics was discussed ad nauseum in a previous to uh, discussion forum here at the uh, con, so I'm going to avoid that one. <laughs> Any other ones? No. All of our ideas are awesome. There you go. <laughs> All right, so, so one last thing. All of you run very active communities. People are contributing content a lot of times as we get ready to wrap up. Is everybody in your community potentially somebody that can make a meme that takes off? Or is their role only to help perpetuate the ones that other people have made? Do you think anybody can do this? Yes. But probably not on purpose. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's interesting to note that like, I mean, people who have created the uh, memes that have taken off that have then gone and created companies to create them have never done it twice. Isn't that interesting? Like I mean, the three brain guys, you guys remember that, the little wee squirrel? You guys know what I'm talking about there? Yeah, I mean, those guys put up another like 100 videos trying to do that again and they never managed it. It was really, I mean, I like those guys, they're great, but it's interesting that they, they couldn't do it. Pretty I good think consensus. Probably for, um, for OZ Remix, the best chance of any artist on the site creating a new meme would be to partner with uh, artists from other sites and doing videos because they seem to be the best chance of sort of that collaboration breaking through. Yeah, the, the warm and fuzzy on this is it is so damn cheap for anybody to start something. I mean, you'd be shocked. I mean, every, every person I've talked to who's the, at the, you know, the leader of some kind of meme was just like, yeah, it seemed like a cool idea. It seemed like a big joke. I'll just throw it online and see what happens. And, and so often it, it turns mm -hmm. out to be great success. Well, thank you all very much. Let's give these guys a round of applause. Thanks a lot, guys. Um, ice cream is outside, so if you want ice cream, get out of here. And uh, don't forget some TripAdvisor. Hey, if anybody wants an OC Remix t shirt, come on over. We're some, we'll talk to you guys. Ryan, man, what's up, man? Hell yeah, oh my fuck.